Hi everyone, welcome to week six. Um, we truly are in the home stretch of the course, and the purpose of today's video is to just kind of set up that usability assignment that you guys have to do this week. Talk about um, the extra credit video, you know, ten uh, things every designer needs to know about people. Uh, thinking about these types of things really are going to help us um, get good feedback um, on our sites uh, because it's really important for us to provide an effortless experience for our users. So I hope that um, through the use of this video and other things I have provided you in the course that you will be successful this week in terms of continuing to design and develop your term projects. This course, Design Principles 2, really this is where we land in the web development life cycle, truly in these two areas. Um, like we've learned in the past, the planning and analyzing ideally would have been done largely in um, Co-op 2150, um, but now that we're here in 3150, we're truly focusing on the designing and the development. But then you're probably wondering, where is reviewing and testing coming in and publishing and maintaining? You know, you're right, we are doing um, uh, some of that here in this course, but the sites that you guys develop throughout the course of this course probably aren't, I mean, they might function as the sites that really do work, but if you were truly, if this class wasn't a simulation and if you truly weren't, um, if, you, if, you, if you truly weren't just making just kind of like this shell or this mock-up website, um, then you would really be doing a whole lot more in these other phases if the class wasn't truly a simulation, if you were really making the website for Pizza Hut or Domino's or something like that. There's a lot more things that you need to do, but this week I am going to jump into talking about some of the things that we would be doing in the reviewing and testing area. So again, this class is a simulation, so I'm hoping that um, you can really be thinking creatively in terms of your term projects, because that's really what um, as much as you possibly can right now before you get into your full-fledged career, well, maybe some of you are in your full-fledged career, um, it's important to practice and have opportunities to really think creatively because when you guys get into a firm, that opportunity for creativity might be very limited because you're, you're supposed to build a site based on very specific things that you do receive from a client. You may have little or no opportunity to even talk to the client creatively about their designs. Um, but then again, maybe some of you will be in a, a job opportunity where you can do that. But the point of this graph, as I've shown you in other weeks, is um, is to really think about where that creativity lies and how most sites really are just very basic, yet there is a small percentage over there near that light bulb that really uh, break out of the mold and um, can be really, really creative. So I hope that you guys uh, think about that. But it's important to also remember that for this class, you know, I do have to grade uh, this course and the term projects based on a very specific rubric, based on very specific things. So it's like if you did X, then you get so many points. If you did Y, you get so many points. And every single time I teach this course, as you may have seen in your in the grades of your midterm, you know, the majority of the class, you know, do uh, the fall within this bell curve and fit here within this with mold generally where we have a small percentage of students that that do terrible in the midterm and actually I think this time we actually didn't have a lot of students that did really didn't didn't do very well and even if you did uh, please talk to me as you guys probably did last week um, but I'm hoping some of you perhaps might be wanting to re uh, revisit the midterm and finish some of that up I will allow you to do that but then what I'm trying to point out here is that and then there's also um, a small percentage of students that really do like almost perfectly based on the rubric that we get for that I have to the department gives me to grade on the midterm. Um, some of you maybe there's even a percentage of you that would even go above and beyond that but it's really this uh, aspect of creativity that I think that I really want to try to, to push toward you guys to thinking perhaps outside the box thinking creatively with your designs and um, uh, truly trying to, because this is really what the future employees are really going to want to see when they look at your portfolio, is this aspect of creativity. Um, anyway, so this week in terms of reviewing and testing, like I said a minute ago, um, this is where we're going to kind of land in the web development life cycle this week. Um, so as we get started thinking about that, you know, what is it that what is it that we test? You know, and here I'm just going to share in these next two slides just some bullets for us to kind of talk about. You know, have we validated each page uh, running it through the W3C. You guys, I'm sure, are doing that every single week before you share something with, uh, with your peers uh, to to review and and in your in your peer discussions. Um, but that's very important. And there's, it, I'm sure, you guys, I'm hoping, have a background in understanding why were we even doing that. The purpose of the W3C. It's not like saying 
I mean, a page can validate, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be effective and efficient for its users. It doesn't mean that it, it's aligned with the purposes and goals of the site. But what that's really doing is just saying that, uh, based on the code, strictly just the code, does it is it is it free from one is it one free from errors, um, and is it two going to be able to parse um, on a large scale m mostly with the major devices that the W3C is involved with, which is you know currently all devices basically, and in the sense is it going to work best in the different browsers. Um, but it's important for us to go through checks of that. And you're probably thinking, you know, Dave, I know that if I was to run, you know, Amazon's website through the W3C, it's going to come up with errors. And you're right. If you were to run Webster's website through the W3C, it's going to come through errors. But um, so this being said, you know, does every site have to go 100%? Um, I would say I'm not going to answer that question. All I'm going to say is that uh, let's strive for that. How about that? Is, is that? is that a good answer? Let's Let's strive for that. Um, have we proofread the page content and the titles on every page, accurate spelling and grammar? Now, who creates the content? That's your client. So is it up to us to be proofreading things that the client sends us? No, not necessarily. But what are we making? We're probably creating page titles, uh, headings, uh, links and navigation. Those things are definitely proofread because those are things that we're making. Um, the content, the, the client is sending us the raw content that goes on the pages. So, I mean, it would be helpful if you notice a spelling error to maybe contact the client. But maybe the client's like, uh, I wrote that. That's how I want that to be spelled. Have a nice day. And that's very possible. But what we're writing the content for, well, it's not really content. I mean, with the, the structure is, you know, the title of the pages, the, the what links are found on the navigation, anything that we're writing to make the user have an effortless experience so they can get to that content that they're looking for, so they can get from A to B. We're writing that information, so we need to make sure that, that all of it is spelled correctly. Um, is the page layout consistent? Does it generate a sense of balance and order? You know, does it jump around when you jump from page, one page to another page? Does the menu jump? Um, things like that. So look through that as you're clicking through your site and testing it to make sure that it's going to, to um, uh, have an so the user can have an effortless experience. Very important to think through those things and, and test everything out. Um, are any links broken? You know, how embarrassing would that be if you give your site to the client and then they click on a link and it's broken, or they try to get to one aspect of the site and then it's broken when it shouldn't have been broken? These types of things you shouldn't expect the client to, to find out. I would hope that we're not expecting even other students in this class to, to find out for you. Um, it's helpful if they do, but I mean, you guys should really be testing your site fully. Or if, if you give your site to another student in the class to look at, you know, you should say, tell them up front, hey, just so you know, this page isn't built yet. There's not actually something wrong with it. It's just not this page isn't built yet. Just give them a heads up. Um, does the multimedia interactivity and forms function correctly? You know, is the different things that you guys have set up in your site, is it is it functioning the way that it's supposed to function? Of course, those things should be tested before you pass it on to the next next phase. You know, does the more widely used browser display the website properly? Um, yeah, I mean, of course, you should test your site based on all of the major browsers out there. Um, if you actually had some analytic data, you would actually know, oh, well, most of the, 99% of the users are all using Firefox, which could be the case. Or perhaps, you know, we've seen Google Chrome become more popular ever these days. But generally speaking, sometimes, inter unfortunately, Internet Explorer is one of the most popular browsers out there on the web because that's just what comes prepackaged on all of these uh, PCs that people are buying. Um, but, you know, so that's why you need to make sure that your site basically just works in every browser as best as you can. Uh, but I guess if you were to find out that 99% of the users were using Opera, maybe you would probably try to do some things to make sure that their Opera experience is, is uh, very effective. Um, does the website function properly in different browsers? Oh, I already talked about that. Have you tested the pages to make sure that they load quickly and load over lower speed connections? You know, a lot of that has to do with the multimedia on your pages and the size of your images on your pages, which we talked about in previous weeks. Um, so make sure you're testing all that and then make sure your images are actually as small as they can possibly be in terms of file size, but still look good, of course. You know, we don't want to be putting uh, large images in a site and then um, scaling them down to be viewed in the browser because essentially the browser has to load that large image before uh, e even though that you have scaled it down to be a, a smaller size. Um, so think about those types of things when you're making your site. I, as I suggested in previous weeks, you know, it's my opinion that the, si the size of the image that you uh, want your users to see, that should be the actual size of the image that's in the site. I know that within HTML, you know, basically we're just coding a window to the image. 
you know that being the case you could have an image that's 500 by 500 but then you could scale it down in the HTML to be 250 by 250 but the 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 HTML, the, the user still actually loads that 500 by 500 image. Um, so it's my opinion to always give them the exact size. And just because you can do that in HTML doesn't mean that it's a good, it's good and best practice. Good and best practice. Have you printed each page to make sure the pinch, the, the pages print and, and look okay? Um, this is something that we really did a lot in the past, and I think it's not as applicable now. Uh, as we're in more modern designs of the web, because a lot of people aren't pr probably printing our pages. But I would say it would be helpful to maybe do it for a few, just kind of see how it is going to look on a printer. Because sometimes if you just look at your site through a different lens, you'll be surprised, like, oh, wow, I didn't notice that that, that does that, yeah, or something like that. Um, so maybe that would be helpful to you. Um, but I would say to go above and beyond that is maybe have you tried to look at your site on a mobile browser? Have you tried to look at your site on um, different operating systems, a different computer setup. You know, I have students all the time that say, oh, this uh, site looks fine on my personal computer, but when I go to look at it at the computer in the lab, it looks differently. Why is that? Well, um, yeah, you got to take a look at how you are set up your layout. Is it fixed? Is it fluid? Is it, is it the different resolution problem? You know, different things like that. That That's a very, very common thing, especially with students in my 2000 class. Um, so definitely check out your site on other devices. Um, and then lastly, have you initiated a group test? Um, here in the class, we have each other um, to test our sites. Um, if this was a real world, we would probably, we would hopefully have ideal users, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a second, but we would have ideal users that could test our site. Maybe we would invite them um, for pizza and internet testing um, to come and test the site. Uh, but imagine if you actually had ideal users of a Pizza Hut website, you could actually say, you know, you could talk with them like, you would give them different scenarios and say, hey, go in here, use the site, do this, tell me how many clicks it took you to get to, or was it intuitive to get to the order page, or was it intuitive to find the number of the of the, of the pizza company? Was it intuitive when you got to the menu to find the things that you were wanting for your pizza? So with that, your ideal users, you could actually do more than just having random users. And um, getting ideal users together for a site, something that's probably something that's going to be paid, you know, obviously by a client, but you know, here in the future, you might not work within a firm that has the ability to do stuff like that. Um, so you're probably thinking, well, then how would I do group testing if it's just me as a, just a simple freelancer? What I would say, definitely need to have a set of friends that you could just say, hey, can you take a look at my site that I'm making for so-and-so? Click through it on your own devices, your own personal computer, let me know what you think, and then uh, send this, send your site link, if, if you're able to do that, now the stuff on the site could be copyrighted, you're not allowed to share it, that's always possible. Maybe you would go to the, maybe you would go to the client and say, hey, can you give me some people that could uh, test your site, or maybe the client themselves are going to be the one, probably are going to be the ones that are going to want to test it, and they might not want it shared, so these are just some things to think about. So all this information that you're gathering from these users, um, essentially what that is, is is feedback. It's not necessarily some, I mean, it is something you definitely do in the reviewing and testing phase, but um, imagine if you didn't do this um, until you got to the very end of the web development life cycle. I mean, how terrible would it be is if you got to the very end of the cycle, you finally, uh, the process of developing the site, and then you finally started sharing with others, and you find out, man, you were just totally wrong. Um, that would be very expensive to go backwards. So it's important to remember that this feedback which is this loop aspect over here on the right hand side. It's important to note that this feedback aspect should ideally be happening perhaps at every phase all the time involving the client um, in giving them feedback. I mean our process as you heard me say before it should be, an a I would, my opinion should be an agile process. It's not something that we give, uh, we take the all the information about the site and then we go build it for a month and then give it to the give it to the client and say hey we're done you know it's important to involve the client as much as we can uh, through the whole development to, through the whole development process and I would say and others would say that that would probably that should increase um, the the ability to give the site give the client you know an effective and efficient site that truly meets their needs and meets the needs of their users because um, imagine I mean, think of buying a website almost like buying jeans. Um, you go and uh, a client should ideally be able to go into uh, meetings with you in the very beginning of the process and you kind of talk through you know not necessarily different types of genes but you know different types of different types of sites and try to help them fine-tune exactly what they're wanting you know and they go and they take a look 
at these different aspects of what their site perhaps could be and then you start building it and then essentially over the, the course of the development process they're actually able to try on you know some of these different sites in different stages of development then officially they get to the point where they feel like they finally have found um, the pair that they that they really want um, because if not maybe they would have accidentally purchased uh, a site that really wasn't what they were looking for so it'd be important to you know think of th think of this you know aspect of getting feedback really I, I, not that we're buying jeans but I mean think of how important this aspect of feedback is I mean it really is like you've heard me say in the past some things it's you know worth their weight in gold feedback is so so important whether you're getting it from friends of yours that are taking looking at your sites or you're actually getting it for information from the client I mean that feedback is very 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 important so when you're setting up these types of things, you know, usability testing, because you want to make sure that their site um, is, you know, obviously very usable for their needs. You know, you want to make sure that you set up, that you're having your site tested, you know, within an environment that you can gather data from, that you can actually observe how the user is doing the things that they, you're asking them to do in the site. Perhaps you're giving them a scenario to go through. You know, hey, I, like I said earlier, you know, I want to see how easy it is for you to utilize the menu on the on the pizza website to get gain access to um, uh, finding the toppings that you want to put on your pizza. Actually, go through a process of putting them on your pizza, and then going through the whole checkout process. So you're observing just from based on how your site is set up, how the user is actually doing these things, and you may find out specific ways in terms of you never would have thought. Oh, you, most of the users are going to be going through this process this way. So I want to make sure that I leverage the design and the functionality of the site to make sure that they're able to do this process this way rather than the way that I'm forcing them to do it because they're going to want to do it the other way but the, yet they're going to be frustrated doing it the other way because of how I have the site currently set up. So that's sometimes time, sometimes some things that you're going to be getting from your feedback and like I said ideal users you want to make sure that you're doing it I, if you could with ideal users. These are users that um, you've determined are the actual uh, used site that you're developing the site for but if you could actually use ideal users for your testing, you know, if you if your site is basically for um, uh, females that are in their 30s, but yet you're testing the site with teenage boys, I mean, it, are you going to get a, a true test with that? Um, so some things to think about. And when you're testing, of course, you're looking at, you know, you've seen this graphic before, you know, are they able to access the content that they're looking for? You know, is the design helping them find, figure out where their content is? And then when they try to get to their content, is it actually giving them uh, what that they, what that they, are they actually able to get to it? And is it giving them what they need? And so it's important to remember that they should be testing it on the actual agents that they would be using. Ideally, like for example, like I was a part, uh, been part of usability tests in the past, and. Um, just as an example, you know, imagine if you're trying to test out a mobile browser for a new website. So you invite users to come to a testing area, a testing facility, testing room where you're going to be filming them with cameras, looking at their, at looking at your mobile site, looking at how they're able to get from A to B in the site, and you're observing this. But imagine, yeah, I mean, I've been a part of a test where the users show up and then they then have to go to all these different spots in the room. The room's very quiet and they're going up to these different devices that are fixed um, on this wall on this display so they have to hold the device in a very specific way and this is also perhaps what if it's a device that they've never even used before you know so what i'm trying to get at is there's these different confounding variables that could be involved when testing it's like cause if, you, if you're like let's say i was to force you know i bring in you know 15 18 year old males to test this website okay so those are my users that I've chosen to do my scientific test. And then I'm then telling them that they all have to use iPhones with this specific operating. Uh, they're all using the same iPhone. They're all using the same browser. They're all using the same OS. And then they're all accessing the, they're all accessing the site. And you're probably thinking, well, man, you're really limiting all the variables there. Yes, but what are you testing? What if the user, this 18-year-old male, has never used an iPhone before? So then you're testing their ability to, one, use an iPhone, and then to eventually access the site. So what I would suggest, and I've suggested to people and, and firms that I've worked with in the past, to be able to actually 
have them have the 18 year old males come to the room but just let them use their own devices let them walk around and give them a task you know maybe tell them not to talk to each other but i mean basically then you're truly observing um the user using it on their own actual device because you don't want to throw in hey now you got to learn how to use an iphone you know just as an example and then of course making sure that they're using it with their own with with the browser of their choice you know is but that's of course but the poor you get to the reviewing and testing make sure that you've tested it to make sure that the site's going to parse well uh, with the browser that that they're using but um, so anyways so make sure you by the time you get to this reviewing and testing point what I'm talking about is that when you're actually getting bringing people together you know they shouldn't be checking for broken links you know they're just you're just checking to make sure that you can give them scenario hey I need you to go to the menu do this I need you to go through the POS do this and you need to make sure that they're able to go through those scenarios go through those tasks make sure that they complete them successfully to make sure that the user gets what they need you're not testing the site in terms of tell me what broken links you find tell me where there's spelling errors you know that would be absolutely embarrassing if you brought together people like that and they're gathering that types of data for you you should already have that checked and figured out months before you bring users in but what I'm trying to say is they're coming in they're using it on their own devices and they're using it within their browser of choice and by this point you should make sure of course that you know it's going to parse well on all the different browsers and then if you go through these types of things ideally the user is going to be get be able to get what they need so they would be happy the user is able to find the content that they're wanting to find um, we talked about this graphic in the past in terms of if the user gets to the site and it doesn't have what they find you know they're going to leave but by this point you have ideal users you know that they're going to want to use your site but still you want to make sure that they're able to find the content that they want and the design helps them find the content that they want and the, the site functions in such a way that they're able to do what they need to do to get to the content that they want very 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 important to think through all of these aspects um, when you're when you're talking about uh, reviewing and testing a site, you know, there's much that you have to go through, and I hope that this presentation, just a little quick run through of some of this, kind of helps you for framework some of these things, especially for your assignments this week. So these are the activities that we're going through this week. I'm asking you to go back and take a look at chapter nine again. I know that you guys perhaps read through chapter nine, or if you at least you were assigned to do it, doesn't mean that you did it. There's no way for me to know if you actually went and read chapter nine of your book. Um, but I'm asking you to go back and look at it now with a different lens, a lens of usability. And I also am also giving you some suggested uh, usability resources uh, for you to check out as you're preparing your um, usability assignment this week. And then I do have suggested Linda videos, which I'm going to showcase for you here in just a second. Um, your assignments this week are, are twofold. Um, of course, your pair discussion. Um, and I would hope that by the time that you've gotten to this week, um, for the, the mock development of your site design that you're 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 because now we're in the home stretch of the course I mean we just have a few more weeks so I'm hoping that uh, in preparation for your initial draft which is due next week that you are truly finalizing aspects of your site this week so I'm hoping you're able to do that and then get some good feedback like we were talking about earlier from other students in the course I'm hoping I mean I've been seeing some great discussions in there in terms of giving each other feedback about their sites and asking each other questions and I'm hoping that that continues on this week as I'm gonna mix things up and give you some different students in the class to work with um, and then your assignments this week oh you definitely the week six quiz so make sure that you complete that but then the usability assignment which I'm going to talk about here a little bit more in depth in just a second and then and then the extra credit is 10 things every designer needs to know about people so I'm um, of all the videos that I have in the course, I think a lot of people have told me that they really found this video really helpful in terms of the extra credit videos. Um, so definitely give it, maybe at least start watching it and give it a few minutes of your time. And if it's something that you want to continue on watching this week, that's up to you. Um, but definitely, I, I would hope that you put it in your bookmark, save it for later. Um, and I'm hoping this video will inspire you and help you give you some background in terms of thinking about your user. So um, I'm hoping that, that that'll be good for you so be sure that you check that out so now let's chat about the usability assignment here are the specific tasks that I'm, I'm suggesting you go through to have it fully completed um, number one re review the SPRQ which I have a link within the course and of course the elements of page design which is found in your chapter 9 of your textbook so you review these two bodies of knowledge and then now our task is going to be to create six questions that are adapted from these two resources um, two of each of the six questions should be coming from these three different categories that are proposed in the SPRQ. Um, usability, trust and credibility, and appearance. So 
you're basically using this bodies of knowledge to create your own questions. And you're thinking, okay, what am I going to use these questions for? Well, you're creating this usability tool that you could use to assess the usability of perhaps your website, which I think would be useful for you to think of this in terms of your own website at the moment. But then next week, you're actually, which I'll show, talk to you about in a second. Next week, you're actually be using your tool that you created to give someone feedback on their site. And then number three, for each question, you must create, you must cite a reference from your textbook or uh, the, uh, some sort of primary external resource. And, I, and remember those suggested usability resources that I gave you, those are a few that you can definitely use um, as a primary resource to help you develop this tool. And I just want to make sure that you've looked at those, make sure you've looked at your textbook, so be sure that you're citing references to how you developed your six questions based that, that fit within these uh, three categories that are suggested in the SBRQ. So um, it's important to make sure that I just want to make sure that you're using these resources and make sure you're using them effectively to develop these questions. So don't just come up with these questions willy nilly. Um, that's what I'm just trying to do. And then, of course, number four, submit your assignment to me for feedback right now in week six. Then my goal is to give you some feedback and pretty quick turnaround, hopefully, and then you'll be able to implement the feedback that I gave you, and then you're able, actually be able to conduct the usability study on someone else's site next week, uh, basically just within your pair discussion area. So that's, uh, I'm hoping, going to give you an opportunity to really think critically about your site as you create this tool, but then you're also going to be able to give someone some really good feedback. Remember how feedback inform is so important, it's worth its weight in gold? Well, I'm hoping that your development of this tool will be a great process and then also give someone else in the class some really good feedback. From our Linda resources this week, I'm suggesting the following videos that relate to optimization. As you are reviewing and testing your site yourself, um, I think it's very important to have in your tool belt some different things and some different, uh, in, in terms to help you optimize perhaps your graphics, but also optimize your code. So that's why I have these two different sets for you. They're both by the same author, Justin Seely, who we've been using uh, in the past from some different Linda videos that we've been watching. Um, specifically, I think that you guys um, are doing a really good job in terms of optimizing your graphics. I mean, I saw a lot of that uh, in your midterm and in the, in the state of your term project so far. But what I would like to try to suggest to you is um, the, the visual optimization of your CSS. So that would be to make sure that your CSS and, and all of your code in general is very user friendly on the back end so that other web designers can come in and use it or so that your client can come in and perhaps work with it after you give them this pair of jeans so they can then go out of the store and then be successful with perhaps updating their site themselves. Um, so here's just an example of some of the topics that are going to be covered in the CSS visual optimization video by Justin Steely. So I would suggest, you know, one of all the Linda videos, it's very important to check these out because um, I actually have been, you know, taking a look at your CSS and I've been making suggestions to many of you but a lot of it here reside with some of the things here. So, you know, as, like, for example, you guys were looking at the CSS of the, what's it called, the CSS Zen, CSS Zen, CSS Zen Garden, sorry, the CSS Zen Garden stuff back in the midterm, you know, many of them, when you started looking at the CSS, had a table of contents, you know, and it had different headings for the CSS. Think about how, how that made their CSS so much more useful to an external designer like yourself. Uh, and then, there's videos within the section talking about increasing the readability of your code with indenting your code, best practices for class names and using CSS shorthand, you know, very important uh, things. I've seen some of you creating classes that are labeled 1, 2, and 3. You know, how effective is that? I have no idea. That's not descriptive for me whatsoever to know what class number 1 is. Um, what is a comment? Using comments. Um, uh, in some ways, it can comments can be overdone, but then also more what I normally see is that there's not enough. Um, avoid unnecessary tags and classes. This is where it gets into. You may have heard me say that you you need to simplify your CSS. So watching these this bottom section here would help you learn how to do that. So avoiding unnecessary tags and classes, avoiding redundancy with your selector groups, reviewing. Removing unnecessary line breaks, unused selectors, more importantly, and then also Justin's going to share with us some different tools to help you minify your your CSS. So this week, you know, remember our goal is to make sure that we're giving each other really good feedback in preparation for um, our 
initial uh, site design, which is due next week, which would then the same goal will be to give really good feedback with the different the do different tools that we're creating um, to make sure that we're giving good feedback so that we can have a site, have this package site that would at, at this current state and this simulated you know course that we would have a site that's effective and efficient for our users. And as I end all of my my lecture videos, I'm trying to empower you to be an observant web user. Um, of course, as you're outside on the web, just poking around, you know, what are they doing? How are they doing it? Let me take a peek at the code. Let me use perhaps Firebug or uh, some Mozilla tools to take a look and see how they're doing what they're doing. And I'm going to Google it and try to learn, you know, from that. Uh, but then also be an observant web user as, you're, as this week as you're really truly trying to give uh, each other feedback. I think that's that's very important. And then, of course, let the class or I know if you have any questions. The best way to do that is to ask those in the general questions area. Please, please, please don't ever let a, a question that you have in the class go unanswered. And if you send it to me via email, just keep in mind I'm probably going to share it within the class because I want to make sure that everyone's learning from everyone's questions. Questions are very important. So, have a good week, and as I always say, let me know if you have any questions.